Not quite sure it's no Canardo Forbes, no problem for the Riverhounds, but that's two for two without their captain as they take care of New York Red Bulls to three to nothing at Red Bull Arena in Harrison, New Jersey on this Saturday evening. I'm Matt Geico. This is Pittsburgh post game, flying solo tonight as uh, the Hounds have now won three in a row. They sweep the three match week. I did not see that coming, especially once we found out that Canardo Forbes was going to be out for uh, medium to long term here, not looking like he's going to be back for the end of the regular season. Uh, so for the next month or so, the Hounds have to get by without their leader. But boy, you wouldn't have been able to tell tonight based on their performance that they were missing an MVP candidate in the USL Championships all-time leader in assists. Yes, they got a couple of bounces. An own goal in the second half helped them pull away in this third consecutive 3 nothing win. But uh, the bottom line is the result was gained, and they have blanked three straight opponents. Denny Vitiello, the second-year keeper, but first-year hound, and really first-year pro when you look at experience. He gets the clean sheet once again in back-to-back -back starts. I don't know if we have a goaltending controversy in Pittsburgh, but definitely a competition, it appears, between him and the veteran Tomas Gomez. Pittsburgh now 8-3-1 and one with 25 points on the season. They are currently, as we stand right now, nine clear of Hartford Athletic for first place in Group F. Doesn't mean they've locked up the group by any means. Hartford still has... Well, three games in hand now, and they'll be playing Loudoun United FC as this postgame show begins here. But uh, at the bottom line, at the worst, the Hounds will have at least a six-point lead going into their uh, second matchup against Hartford next Saturday, 7 o'clock at Highmark Stadium. So while well, you talk about taking care of business, I've talked about it a lot in this group because of the Hounds being in a group with three MLS development sides and Philly Union too, Loudoun United, of course, the uh, – the, the, uh, the child club, the, um, <laughs> the, uh, the two club of D.C. United, and also New York Red Bulls, too. Typically, if not the strongest, one of the strongest development teams in the USL Championship year in and year out. Not the case this year for John Wolinick's team, as they are now 3-7 and seven and uh, not looking very good. In fact, it's desperate time. They are uh, 10 points behind, or could be 10 points behind Hartford by the end of the night with just six matches to play. So that might have been the nail in the old coffin for the Baby Bulls. In addition to the Hounds continuing their mid to now late season pace, they are 6-1-1 one one since that 2-0 start. 2-2 uh, two two start, pardon me. They won their first two, lost two in a row, and now they've reeled off quite a few results uh, consecutively here. And an impressive performance at Red Bulls, too. They weathered what was uh, a pretty good push, a pretty good charge from the Bulls in the opening 30 minutes, as I alluded to in the halftime show but after that they were clearly the better team and they got the own goal off the uh, the dodgy clear from Killwine, the center back for new york but then steven dos santos crossing a ball in for robbie mertz that made it three nothing just shy of the hour mark albert dequa came in as a substitution for the second straight match hit the post on a header now uh Torre for new york also hit the post could have made it three one but i'm not going to go ahead and say that that would have necessarily turned the game and uh, when you play Red Bulls, too, I almost feel like, at least when I go into these matches, predicting what's going to happen or trying to project, I usually expect New York to get one. And they did have a couple of prime chances that Torre drive off the post in the second half, the, uh, the one that stands out the most. But there were some early looks off some free kicks. Some balls were bouncing in the Hounds box. Uh, Pittsburgh wasn't the most energetic to start. Maybe they could have used a, a couple more Red Bulls <laughs> in the old bloodstream at that point. But they found their wings. See what I did there? as the game went along, and here they are now atop the Eastern Conference, and we'll see what Tampa does tomorrow night against Philly Union 2. I expect three points from the Rowdies there, but neither here nor there. The Hounds are going to be a top-two position, a top-two team in the East going into the final four matches, and as Bob Lilly has alluded to a couple of times in recent weeks, the schedule really turns in the Hounds' favor in the final month because now they just play once a week until the end of the regular season, and if they go to even the playoffs, they're not going to be any midweek games either, uh, since there are no buys this, uh, this year due to the COVID situation. It's uh, pretty much straight up. 16 teams make it. It's four rounds of playoffs one week after the other. So now the Hounds are in the clear, at least when you talk about short rest. They've gotten through it. And also alluding to what Lily talked about this week in one of his press conferences, Pittsburgh got better in each of their three multi-game weeks. In each of their three, uh, three and seven or three or eight stretches, three and eight stretches this season, like this one was, they progressively got better. They uh, went one and two the first time they had to play three in the matter of a week. They went one, one and one last time, giving away a lead at home against St. Louis. This time they beat Hartford 3-0 on the road to take the lead in the group. 
They beat Loudon on Tuesday at Highmark Stadium, and they beat New York Red Bulls to 3 nothing. Their first ever win at Red Bull Arena, by the way. They did win on the road at New York last year, but that was at Montclair State University. This was not at the home of the, the Red Bulls Major League Soccer squad. So I guess uh, check another box there on the to-do list for the season. Goals in this game, Ropapa Mensa, his fourth of the season. Also, Robbie Mertz getting his fifth, tying Steven Dos Santos for the team lead. The Hounds now have five players with four goals or more. They have Mensa, they have Dos Santos, Robbie Mertz, Anthony Velarde. Uh, pardon me, uh, yeah, four players with four or more. Those three uh, that I mentioned to you, plus Robbie Mertz. And then they also have uh, a couple of guys with multiple goals. Ryan James with three and Lucas Fernandez with two. Danny Griffin with two. What a balanced attack for a team that came into the game already on pace to be the highest scoring team in terms of goals per game in Riverhounds history. They came in averaging a little over two and a half. Now they are at, uh, well, close to 2.75. Uh, remarkable finishing here. Three goals on, guess what, just seven shots on target. Uh, four, four on target, seven total. So three for seven converting today. That's almost 50%. That's going to boost their conversion rate even higher. They came in at 31% leading the USL championship there. So the superlatives continue to roll in. And, um, well, this was a classic type of a soccer match where the final result, uh, well, certainly didn't feel like it was going to be possible in the early going. I was almost certain the Hounds were ready to concede in, uh, in the opening stages of this game. And I know a lot of you out there may have felt the same way. But we saw the, the poise and the, the veteranosity of this group, if you will, come to the forefront. And even guys that are just second-year pros like Robbie Mertz, but uh, I think Mertz had an outstanding game helping the Hounds at least get some control in the midfield and make it more of an even match on the attack. They still conceded possession uh, in this match, but I didn't expect them to have possession on the third match in, in eight days or third match in nine days, however you want to consider that. Um, Passing-wise, it wasn't a pretty match in that way. 61% was the, the passing completion mark for the Hounds in this game. And, and looking at the season that may be yes it is their worst number of the year even worse than their previous loss to New York um, back on July the 26th but you know what all those ancillary numbers don't add up to much when uh, you do have the better of play and I think especially late in the game once the uh, Red Bulls opened it up the Hounds only gave up that one look to Torre and that was about it so um, all I got to say is wow what a week for the Hounds, and, and I mentioned the, the goalkeeping. I guess we'll see where Bob Lilly goes. That'll be one of the questions I'll ask uh, about his now it appears to be a true two-keeper tandem with Vidiello starting two in a row here and getting a couple of wins. You know that without Canardo Forbes, it's going to be difficult, but now the Hounds will be fully rested for every match from here on out, and they're in not maybe not the, the driver's seat to get first overall in the Eastern Conference as Tampa still has a match in hand, and Tampa can move ahead with a win tomorrow, but they're in a terrific spot to at least have home field in the first two rounds of the USL championship playoffs, which, as we all know, completely critical, even though last year they lost in extra time to, uh, to Louisville in the, uh, the Eastern Conference semis. But neither here nor there. Other notes in this match, uh, Mark Lindstrom checking out on a yellow card. So relief for the Hounds. He didn't get a red, didn't get a second yellow, which, of course, was very possible with how dangerous that Red Bulls attack is. They put you in some difficult and uncomfortable spots. Patrick Bunk Anderson made another appearance. He uh, appeared in every match this week, so a little more depth on the back line. Also good to see Danny Rovira back in the match as a late sub. I think the Hounds could use his pace, um, especially against some of these quicker, younger teams. So you look ahead to matchups against Loudon and Philly Union 2 still left on the schedule. Good to see him healthy. And I mentioned Albert Dequa checked in for Ropapa Mensa in the second half and uh, nearly scored his second Hounds goal. Let's also not forget the Hounds had two more goals whistled down and whistled uh, off as, uh, as offside plays as we had Ropapa Mensa scoring off of a, uh, a Steven Dos Santos header or apparently scoring off a Steven Dos Santos header that hit the post. Mensa just in a bad, unlucky position there ahead of the second to last defender with the keeper pushed up. So um, what would have been a tap-in normally was waved off. And in the first half, I didn't mention this in the halftime show on Steel Army Radio, but um, it was Thomas Bunke Azil who headed one in off uh, a pretty crafty little uh, drop-in ball from Robbie Mertz where it looked like he was probably going to shoot toward goal from a pretty centralized position about 20, 25 yards out. Instead, it probably should have been an assist. I thought it was close enough to let go, but 
the assistant referee obviously didn't feel that way on the far side. So here are the Hounds now at 8-3-1. and one. They'll await the result from Hartford. Hartford does not play this week, uh, midweek, so both teams will be rested going into next week's showdown at Highmark Stadium. Hartford Athletic with a win today against Loudon, which is not a gimme. Loudon playing better lately, and they just tied Hartford a couple of weeks ago. But if Hartford does win, it's a six-point advantage for the River Hounds. Hartford has a couple of matches in hand, but uh, they're going to be busier, and they're going to be more tired down the stretch. So I'm not really sure if that advantage is an advantage at all at this point. As I talked about with John Krasinski, once you get late in the season, uh, th that, uh, <laughs> that games in hand thing can be a gift and a curse. So we'll see how it plays out. The beauty of it for the Hounds, though, is with one more win against Hartford, they can put themselves in full control of their destiny. And that's the way they'll be uh, heading into next Saturday's match with the boys in green and blue. Thanks again for watching on Pittsburgh Post Game. Matt Geike here with you solo as our coverage of Pittsburgh's Pro Soccer Club continues on. Now in position to try for a second consecutive Eastern Conference regular season title. Yes, it's possible, despite that 2-2 two and two start that had them stuck in neutral in Group F for a while. Also, thank you for listening all evening long on Steel Army Radio on the Discord there. Join the party. I'll uh, continue to tweet out that link before each and every match as I continue to give you more local coverage, more local broadcast coverage, because as of right now, it doesn't look like I'll be back in the broadcast booth on ESPN Plus at Highmark Stadium, at least for the near future. Holding out hope for the playoffs if the Hounds get a couple of home playoff games. But uh, for the rest of the regular season, just expect more of this. And I'll try to make it as uh, robust and diverse of coverage as possible, even though tonight no guest was available uh, to me. So hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And we'll talk to you next week. Hounds win. Hounds win 3-0 over New York Red Bulls, too. And they move on to Hartford. Bye-bye.